Hey, this is Edison Abwell from Passion 47, and let's talk about fading in and out audio. Now, if you watch some of the earlier videos I did, we really just focus on starting and stopping audio. And so, I created a, just a quick prototype scene, something similar to um, what we have before as far as setup goes, is we have a trigger that has an audio source on there, and then we just have our script. Now, if I just bring this over real quick, um, so we have all this set up, and we have our on-trigger exit and an, our on-trigger enter. And they both are just running these functions uh, respectively. You know, we're checking to see if it's playing, and if it is playing, set the volume to 1 just in case, and then, uh, you know, play the audio. And if, it's, and if it is playing and we're stopping, then we stop it. Really simple. Now, the thing about fading in audio that you have to understand is, is this is something that is in all programming, not just in Unity, but everything runs in a loop. And so when we have our, our wake, our update, you know, by default you would think running this in update would make the most sense. However, you'll actually run into problems because if we actually do the math real quick, let's say you're running at 60 frames per second. There's a thousand milliseconds in one second. So if we divide the thousand by 60, that means that our code has 16 milliseconds to run code. And so every time we run something in the update loop itself, what will actually happen is, is let's say Unity needs 10 milliseconds. Uh, when we run our code, if I bring this back in here, when we run our code, let's say we're, we're to run this in, in an update loop. We want to do fade sound. Uh, what will happen is, is every single line of code needs to be executed before it can move on. And so by polluting the update function, we actually are going to harm our game. So, if, so let's say this for whatever reason, this logic takes 10 milliseconds. Now we know Unity needs some time to run its own logic, and so what will happen is, is our frame rate will drop. And so the way we, we get away from that is it's actually run this in what is called a coroutine. A, um, depending on what language you come from, a coroutine, a, an, uh, a numerator, uh, uh, if you're from JavaScript or Node, then that's going to be promises. All of those uh, run outside of the process or the thread. And so what happens is, is you can have the update loop running and then have this running outside of that update loop. And so to demonstrate, I'm just going to go ahead and code this in here. And I'm going to do another, this is actually going to be an I enumerator because we're going to be creating what's known as a coroutine. We're going to create an I enumerator. And we're just going to call it fade sound. Nothing fancy. Now the way the enumerator works is, is, remember when I was explaining about the update loop, it happens that every single line of code needs to be read. With a enumerator or a coroutine, you can actually give up that control and let something happen over time. And so over time, we want to you know check the sound and, and decrease it. And we'll have control over that. And because it's not happening in the update cycle, uh, you know we have to treat this function just a little different. And so what I'm going to do is say while our source that volume, sorry, while our source that volume is greater than 0.0, .0 one F because it's a flow. We want to then run whatever is inside of this loop. And then with enumerators, you, you have to return a um, something, you know. So we're gonna return um, we're gonna yield return null. And the yield portion just gives up control um, until a certain excuse me in, until some until our event is actually done. And so in this case I want to, to do our source that volume and I'm going to do minus equals. Uh, and the reason for that is, is we want to, over time, we want to decrease this. And so the first thing I'm going to do is do time dot delta time. And then I'm going to divide that by the duration we want. So in this case, let's say we want to do this over one second. So 1.0f, uh, because it's a float. And what will happen now is, is uh, if I run fade sound, in place of our stop sound. So we're calling stop on trigger um, exit. So instead of calling stop sound, we're going to call, oops, 
we're going to call fade sound. Now, you're going to think, oh, okay, so we call fade sound, but it, with enumerators, or in this case, it's a coroutine, we really aren't just taking this function and calling it directly, because that's not um, how it works. So what we want to do is, is we want to go and do a start coroutine, and then take the name of the function that we have, and then pass it in as a string. And so now, if we go back into Unity, just make sure everything is right. Okay. If we go back into Unity now, I'm just going to run this. So as you can hear, there's nothing going on. Come into here that's playing. And I just look at the volume on our right hand side. You see, as I leave, it slowly goes down. Now it doesn't actually stop the volume because if I if I come back in here, you'll see nothing plays. Um, what happens is it actually never stopped our volume. So we're going to go back now and actually stop the volume itself. So what we what we're going to do is is when when this function runs, when this source volume eventually um, comes down to uh, just about this value. We then have the ability to run code after or post the enumerator's uh, you know finishing. So we can just do source dot volume because we saw that it was a little clunky at the end. We're gonna set that to the value of zero because we'd rather work in, in whole numbers. And then we're going to do source dot stop, and this will actually stop our our value or our value of sound from playing. So now if we come back in here again, you can see this is playing, we're good, we did the volume again, and as it gets to the end, then it goes and it sets it to zero. Now when I come back in here, you see the volume automatically jumps back to one, and then it fades again. Now, what is controlling that, and why do we have this time that delta? This this portion right here is what's actually controlling the fading, uh, and let me explain why. Now, before when I mentioned about our, our 16 frames per second, without getting into too much math, uh, time that delta tells us when the, uh, how long it took for the last frame to actually run, or since or the time since it ran, and and the importance of that is is most games run by frames, right? You have 60 frames per second, you hear 30 frames per second, uh, and what will happen is, is if we were to do this in the update loop, every single second, if it's a 60 frame per second, you know, interaction, then it's going to happen 60 times every single second. And so, by using time.delta time, what we're doing is just finding out the time since the last frame. So what we're doing is, is we're getting kind of like an offset. We're getting an offset value for the time. And so that way we can just say, hey, whatever the time is divided by one second, and this will give us the exact value. So all this portion right here is, is giving us the exact value for how do we get for the current frame rate, because that can vary. If you're on a system that's really slow or a system that's really fast, we, we don't want to have to calculate that right now it's at 60 frames per second, but you know, on a mobile device, it's at 30 frames per second. This gives us the option just to say, hey, look, I need this to go down in one second. Give me the value that I actually need to decrease this by every single time. And so that's how you fade sound in Unity. Now, this can work with a lot of other things. There are quite a few other things that we can do to this. We can actually use math.lerp, uh, and we can also... Uh, use min and max just to make sure nothing goes above and below one but just to get you started because you know, I know you know I've had quite a few sound designers ask about this this is just a this is the best practice for getting you started and doing it correctly uh, so that you know if you do have to pass this code on or if you're in an interview and somebody asks you a question you know that this is the best way to actually handle uh, you know separation of code and logic but also you know keep the system running as efficient as possible this is Edison Abelard, and I'm out.